All right, it's time to catch up with my guy, Ryan Burns. Go for Illustrated covers Minnesota for 24-7 sports. Uh, Ryan, congratulations on the Minnesota Twins playoff victory. <laughs> yeah, first time in essentially my lifetime. It's been uh, far too long, but it's good to know the kings of the AL Central can finally win a playoff game, can finally win a playoff series, and we'll see if Royce Lewis can carry us to the promised land in 2024. Yeah, uh, not to make this the uh, AL Central podcast, but King, Kings of the NL, AL Central, I'll give you that. <laughs> I, have no, I have no retort to that. Freaking twins, freaking twins. All right, well, somebody had to be atop the Big Ten West standings, Ryan. And what do you know? It's it's Minnesota right now. How have they gotten there? Well, imagine if they didn't blow a 24, uh, excuse me, a 21-point lead to Northwestern in the fourth quarter with 13 minutes left. They'd be 4-1 and one in the Big Ten. They'd really have a commanding lead, especially with Ohio State still on the schedule. But that's the Big Ten West, where no one can get out of their own way at times, where no one has a good offense, where there's good defenses, certainly. But it's when you look across this this kind of vast abyss that is the Big Ten West in terms of quarterback play. I mean, you got six transfers in Ethan Kelly, McManus, and I would argue potentially Luke Altmaier is the best of them, which I know that's not saying a whole lot. But how has Minnesota got here? Well, they continue to run the football in an exceptionally high clip without their All-American, Mohamed Ibrahim, without their great center from last year and John Michael Schmitz. It's just the P.J. Fleck operation keeps humming. And they figured out how to finally beat Iowa two weeks ago for the first time in Iowa City since 1999. I mean, how do they do that defensively? They've really figured some things out since the bye week, but even with running back five that they're currently on and former St. Charles North product, Jordan Newbin, Tyler's younger brother, who at no point in his St. Charles North tenure played running back. He was a receiver and a DB, switches to running back, and he runs for 200 yards last week, 120 after contact. Looked like Chase Brown out there with 10 missed tackles for us. So they just continue to hum along, and it's just you know what you're going to get when you play a P.J. Fleck-led team. And they just continue to do it anyway. Yeah. Illinois fans talk all the time, Ryan, about just get to a bowl game every year. And I would be happy with what mm. the Illinois program has been over the last three decades. Well, Minnesota has done that. And I'm sure Gophers fans now want more. The, the elusive Big Ten West title is their last chance, obviously, at that. But they have found consistency. Uh, how has how has P.J. Fleck built that in Minneapolis? I think <clears throat> this year would be a prime example of the depth that they have where you're, you're on RB5, and these aren't the days two years ago where it'd be Bucky Irving, who's now the star running back, obviously at Oregon, Kai Thomas, who was tremendous for them, and then transferred to Kansas, then now at Kent State. But you could just continue to do what you do well, and even though people know you're going to do it, they can't stop you. And I think for me, where it's really improved, why has Minnesota taken that next step in terms of beating Iowa this year, beating Wisconsin the last two years, finding consistency of in the last three full seasons of football, They've won nine or more games. They've become a lot better in the trenches. I mean, specifically this season, I think this is potentially their best defensive line group in terms of physicality, in terms of depth uh, that they've had in the Fleck tenure. I think you've seen that the last couple of weeks against Iowa and Michigan State with being able to shut down the run. And then offensively, they know what they want to be, and they just continue to execute it at a high level. I mean, they just want to be an offense that, I mean, I don't have to explain it to an Illinois fan. They want to just stay on the ground. I think they're seventh in the country in time of possession, but the big qualm here locally is I think they're 107th in scoring offense in terms of points per game. So they need to figure out a way to become more efficient. But when you can dominate time of possession, when you can be efficient at times in the red zone, and then you can just sit on the football and limit possessions for the opposing offense, that's how you do it. But I think it starts up front. Minnesota's become a lot better in the trenches since Fleck took over. I was going to say, it's not sexy, but it wins in the Correct. Big West. It's what Wisconsin and Iowa have done. It's what Illinois has been trying to do and has done the last two years, not as much this year. Uh, but as you said, they lost Mo Ibrahim. They lost John Michael Jingleheimer Schmitz. Uh, they lost Axel Rushmeyer. Um, yet Minnesota can still run the dang ball. Uh, how have they done that, especially offensive line and then being on their fifth running back? Yeah, and we'll see if, it, we'll see if Minnesota gets one of their uh, stud – freshman running backs back this weekend and Darius Taylor, who's won big 10 freshman of the week, three times already this year, Zach Evans won it uh, freshman of the week as well. When Darius went down, Fleck hasn't ruled either one of them out. And it sounds like Minnesota may be able to get one of them back this weekend. Now Fleck hates to talk injuries. I mean, you know, like I do, you have to ask the question as a media member, 
but you know you're not going to get the answer. And so that's where, if anything, Fleck has really leaned into, you're going to find out two hours ahead of time. Yep. Yeah. You can ask the question. I appreciate you asking the question, but you can go two hours ahead of time. But Darius Taylor has been really good. I would argue if there's a running back that's going to return this weekend, it's going to be him. Six foot, 210 pounds. You think of a, a bigger style of running back like that, and you think probably very downhill, going to run you over. He's just very slippery. I mean, yeah, he can run through you, but it's not like he's going to run over you. You just slip off him for whatever the reason may be. Um, but they just continue to run their inside-outside zone scheme so well. Offensive line-wise, they're old. I mean, they're, we're talking about all guys of illegal drinking age up front. They've had some uh, they've had some injuries up there. They lost their best guard last week. Tyler Cooper didn't play in the Michigan State game. We'll see if he returns this weekend. If not, it's going to be a true freshman at left guard and Greg Johnson uh, going against Johnny Newton, which terrifies the absolute heck out of me, uh, considering we know how disruptive he's been. But they just continue to do what they do well. I mean, I, I don't know how else to say it other than physicality up front. They continue to make little nuanced changes in their inside, mid, and outside zone scheme to where it keeps the linebackers at the second level off. And if they can just make the initial block at the line of scrimmage, they get five, six yards. And you know, like I do, for any Big Ten West offense, if you can be in second and third and short, mm -hmm. you're going to be sitting a lot better than the Iowas of the world. This episode of the Alana Enquirer podcast is brought to you by BetterHelp. Give online therapy a try at betterhelp.com slash Illini and get on your way to being your best self. Do you ever feel like your brain is getting in its own way? Like you know what you should do, what's good for you, but you just can't do it. Well, therapy helps you figure out what's holding you back so you can work for yourself instead of working against yourself. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. All you have to do is just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. And if you and that therapist don't mesh, you can switch your therapist at any time for no additional charge. So make your brain your friend again and give BetterHelp a try. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Illini today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Illini. Yeah, and uh, the third and medium and third and long numbers are not great for the passing attack uh, of Minnesota, as they are for, for most uh, Big Ten West teams here. But Ethan Kelly McMahon, it's Antioch kid from Illinois. Mm -hmm. um, this passing attack, obviously not – striking fear in, in a lot of people right now, but how would you evaluate Kelly Manis in his first year and, and just the weapons he has around him? He's been inconsistent. Um, you know, there's been good moments. There's been bad moments. There's been everything in between. I would say, I think he's either number one and number two in the big 10 in terms of drops. I know he's had at least two interceptions hit the, uh, hit the pass catcher in both of his hands deflect up in the air for an interception. So maybe the stats are a little bit inflated, but I would say the completion percentage is what it is because he's been inconsistent with ball placement, whether it's been a little bit behind, whether we've seen, you know, some into the ground, we've seen some overthrows. It just hasn't been consistent, especially as he's trying to launch the ball down the field. I mean, deep passes for him have been just a little bit off where Minnesota's had guys break open deep. And it just he hasn't been able to find them. That was the story of the North Carolina game where I didn't think North Carolina was particularly great outside of Drake May, who is obviously potentially the number one overall pick. Defensively, they weren't that good. Minnesota had guys open, but Ethan couldn't hit the broad side of a barn at times. Just very inconsistent with his accuracy. And that's been the story is I don't know that Minnesota knows what they're going to get from game to game, series to series, even potentially play to play. Now, I will say the first half of last week, 13 of 18 for 190 yards and a touchdown was arguably his best 30 minutes of play uh, at any point this season. But then you look at the second half, one of four with a pick, and then Minnesota runs it 19 straight times to ice the game. So it's some of it is eighth, and some of it is Fleck is historically been. If they get a lead, they're just going to run the ball, and they're just going to continue to move on. So. Yeah. They don't work on the passing game a ton, but when they do, I mean, you can see why it's inconsistent, but they just don't work on enough for me. Yeah. I've been a big fan of what Joe Rossi has done uh, in his time with the Gophers as defense coordinator. How's that defense holding up this season? Obviously, Tyler Newman, St. Charles kid, is is really dang good at safety. Yeah, and and um, here's what I would say about the – about the defense. Very inconsistent in the first six weeks of the of the season. They had 
going into that North Carolina game, allowed 20 points or less in their previous eight contests. Then the North Carolina game happens through Michigan. They allowed 24 or more points in all of the contests through there. What happened? Missed tackles, missed assignments, poor angles. Um, where Minnesota, if they do allow 20-something or more points, it's been explosive passing plays that have killed them. They've been pretty good against the run all year, but North Carolina just daggered them with explosives. Northwestern daggered them with explosive passing plays. That's how Ben Bryan, of all people, peace and love to that young man, <laughs> should never have thrown for 396 yards and four touchdowns. It should have never happened. But it's been the explosive passing play. The bye week happens, and in the two subsequent games since, now I'm not here to try and sell you that Iowa or Michigan State's offenses are particularly good. They're not. They're dreadful. But I, you know what the, both of them want to do because they don't have stellar quarterbacks. They want to run the football. Prior to Minnesota's game against Iowa, Iowa had run the ball for over 200 yards in each of their previous two games with their tailbacks. Minnesota limited them to 20 carries for 33 yards. That's how you beat Iowa and Iowa City. Last week, Nathan Carter, I think, is a pretty good running back in the Big Ten for Michigan State. They hold him to 49 and uh, the rest of the Spartan running backs, 49 rushing yards. And so that's where I'm very intrigued to see what happens this weekend with Caden Fegan is – I don't know that Minnesota's played anything like what Derrick Henry light looks like there. I mean, you can verify his, his height and size. It's I look online it says 6'3", 250 pounds. Uh, I know at 24 seven sports, we had him listed in the two twenties. So if he is North of two forty, yes. I don't know that Minnesota's played a gigantic running back like this in quite some time. Um, but I'll tell you this much. They've been really good at stopping the run. And I'm sure Joe Rossi is as happy as anybody that Chase Brown is no longer here. That's right. I think we were, we were exchanging emails yesterday, and Chase Brown has just killed Minnesota the last two years. Both games, over 100 yards after contact, he forced 10 missed tackles forced in both of those contests. I mean, there is nobody more happy to see Chase Brown gone than Joe Rossi because he has just been a thorn in the side of Minnesota. 41 carries last year against Minnesota. It was ridiculous. It was absurd. And he is, I will have, you know, I think you and I both see it the same way where maybe you were a big Mo Ibrahim fan, maybe more than some of the other Big Ten people. I am as big of a Chase Brown guy as you're going to find because every time he played Minnesota, mm -hmm. he just killed them. You've heard us talk about home field apparel since the start of the season. There are a lot of collegiate apparel brands out there, but we wanted to partner with home field because their designs are the best out there. Some of Illini Enquirer's favorites are the basketball ringer tee, the rose tee, and the 1980s long sleeve with the script Illini. It's great. Be sure to check out homefieldapparel.com, filter by Illinois, and see what we're talking about. And our listeners get an exclusive deal using code Illini23. Using that code Illini23 gets you 15 percent off your first order we all know you're wearing line eye gear so if you're in need of a refresh we really think that you should check out home field apparel which has the best designs and these shirts guys are really comfortable their designs are super unique and a lot of thought goes into each concept there's really nothing else on the market like what home field is doing you can find them at homefieldapparel.com and use code align 23 for 15 percent off your first order at homefieldapparel.com prep Bielma is nine and zero against minnesota including two and oh at Illinois. I mean, obviously those Wisconsin teams are really good. Minnesota wasn't great. I mean, that was a lot of Tim Brewster at the time, right? So, so racked up wins during that time. But uh, what, what do you attribute that to, especially the last two years? I mean, you mentioned Chase Brown is, is a big part of that, but you know, Illinois kind of wanted to be where Minnesota is and it felt like last year. Okay. Now they're kind of going into this season with similar expectations. Maybe he doesn't have the depth yet that the PJ's built up in, in his program to, to be as mm -hmm. consistent, but what do you make of Bielma's success so far against Fleck? I think of it, and I think it's pretty simple for me. It starts up front. Why has Brett Bielma teams at Wisconsin always been so good? They were, you know, they were, <laughs> I'll keep it PG. They, they kicked you in the mouth or they punched you in the mouth up front, both offensive line, defensive line. I think back to that first game for Brett Bielema against Minnesota and Minneapolis. I think they came out and stunned Minnesota up front. I mean, they were just so physical, and I don't think Minnesota was expecting that, and they never recovered. I know there weren't a lot of points scored in that game, but to me it started up front. And then you look at last year's game, yes, Chase Brown's really good, but it was offensive and defensive line-wise. Minnesota's quarterbacks were gone under constant duress all day. Minnesota couldn't get a stop on third down at any time. Tommy DeVito was just running all over them too at certain points. 
And so that's why they're nine and zero to me is Bielema knows that it starts up front. And that's where it, this game is particularly interesting to me. I know Vegas essentially has it as a pick them at this point. Yeah. I think Minnesota is a one and a half or a two point favorite. But to me, for the first time maybe ever that Brett Bielema has played Minnesota, I'd argue Minnesota on paper, in theory, has the edge up front. I mean, I don't have to detail to you what it looks like, the struggles of the Illini offensive line. Johnny Newton missing the first half of this game is absolutely massive. For my money, he's the best defensive tackle in the entire Big Ten. And so Minnesota's got to start fast. But to me, if you can shut down, uh, number one, the running game for Illinois, which they've done at least the last two weeks now. They haven't done it against Brett Bielema in his time. And then for, uh, force Luke Altmeyer to not be able to scramble because, you know, like I do, he is so lethal as a scrambler. I looked up the stats yesterday. He's got the most amount of scramble yards of any Big Ten quarterback, and it, he's got him by like 120. I mean, he is, he's got 435 non uh, sack adjusted rushing yards there. I mean, he has been really good. He ran for 100 yards the week before. So if you can just make the Illini beat you with the passing game to me, and try and shut down Isaiah Williams as best you can. A lot easier said than done because you know how good he is like I do. But to me, that's where it starts. Why is Brett Bielema 9-0 and against Minnesota? He's punched them in the mouth on the offensive and defensive lines. And if that's going to change this weekend for Minnesota to finally get over the hump, they got to punch back. We mentioned Kelly Ekmanis. We mentioned the running backs and Tyler Newbin. Who are some of the other players that Illinois fans need to know going into this Minnesota game? I'd tell you that they're going to force feed the ball in the passing game to Daniel Jackson, someone that went seven for 120 in a touchdown last week. All seven catches were for first downs. I know Isaiah Williams is two in the big time behind that Marvin Harrison fella out there at Ohio State. Uh, Daniel Jackson's in the, Bears, in the top. Please get to the Bears, please. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll see. Uh, well, we, I don't want to divulge into you don't want to know what my quarterback situation is up here in Minneapolis now because sweet giblets and junipers. Is it not good? <laughs> That was but, the most Minnesota thing I've ever heard you say, by the way. <laughs> oh, but uh, Daniel Jackson, top five in receiving yards, top five in receptions. They're going to force feed him the ball. I think he's got something absurd, like a 35% target share in this passing game. Um, so when they do throw the ball, it's going to be to him. Defensively, they got their best linebacker back last week, had missed the first seven games of the year with a soft tissue injury that was sustained in fall camp, re-aggravated it during trying to rehab. Return last week was on a snap count of 40, hit all of them, thought he'd look good. I would anticipate him starting. That's Cody Lindenberg. And then we're going to see, I think, maybe the X factor in this game. And I know Isaiah Williams runs about 80% of his snaps from the slot, but Minnesota's best corner, I think, is questionable for this game. Now, Fleck won't talk about it, but Justin Wally made a, a tackle near the line of scrimmage last week. In the, in the second half, did not return after leaving the field. I, I don't know if he's in the concussion protocol. Again, P.J. Fleck refuses to give any more detail than he needs to, which is ironic considering his personality is five Red Bulls all the time. Trust me. He and Wally well Smith have so many differences, but there, that's where they, they convene right there. Injuries is the thing. Is I would say injury. talking about injuries is the bane of P.J. Fleck's existence. And now that there's that two hours of beforehand availability report, he can just say, you'll find out two hours ahead of time. Mm -hmm. But we'll see if Wally can return, Lindenberg's back. And then up front, I mean, there's too many guys on Minnesota's defensive line. That's been the nice part for them. Different guys have made plays every week. They get to rotate guys. So you're only seeing guys play 30 to 40 snaps, unlike what Johnny Newton's playing on a given week, which makes – all of what he's doing so much more impressive when he's playing 60 plus snaps a game, but yeah. Daniel Jackson on offense, we'll see who's carrying the rock uh, for Minnesota, but we'll see if Lindenberg can really provide an impact in trying to slow down Caden Fegan. I got to ask you, who's going to win the West? Oh, well, here's the thing. I, you know, I spent a lot of time talking about this yesterday with some people. How crazy would it be to think, because let's let's talk about it. All right. So you got Wisconsin, who's now without Braylon Allen potentially, gets banged up in that Ohio State game, doesn't return, has uh, I believe a boot on his left foot. They're already without Ches Malusi. They're already without Tanner Mordecai. I mean, what does Wisconsin look like? I know that their schedule isn't exactly Murderer's Row here for the month of November, just like Iowa. 
But even with Iowa, you just fired your offensive coordinator for in, in a month. You've already let him know. He's got his pink slip. Mm -hmm. He's out the door. The head coach is clearly upset about it. And so I'm very intrigued to see what that team looks like. Nebraska has won five of their last six. And you could argue of all the teams, it's just like what they continue to do, even though the forward pass there with Henrik Harburg is a theory. But and then you have Minnesota, but Minnesota's got the most difficult schedule left with Illinois this weekend. Then they have to go face former defensive coordinator and Ryan Walters. Then, oh, by the way, you get to go play the number one team in the country in the horseshoe, which Minnesota hasn't won there in quite some time. And then you finish at home against Wisconsin. So if you asked me which of these teams, I, I would say either Iowa or Nebraska, oh, which is man. crazy to say. Yeah, but look at the schedules for some of these teams, man. Especially for the uh, for the last two weeks of the year, where Nebraska's got Wisconsin and then Iowa on Black Friday. We're talking about if Nebraska can win those two games, and Minnesota does lose to Ohio State, and they finish seven and two. Matt Rule and that team potentially to Indianapolis. How crazy is that? I'd say a lot about Scott Frost as well. Sorry, I had, yeah. to, dig, I had to get my dig in there uh, before we got out of here. Uh, how nervous are Minnesota fans about Fleck appearing on the Michigan State hot boards? Well, shoot, I even saw that uh, some betting site for if Jim Harbaugh goes, he's like the number one target apparently. I'll believe it when I see it. Um, it's every single year we see, we, I, whether it was Tennessee. Or to stay. I just, I, I'm so tired of uh, – kind of the speculation what do i think that a fleck would be very interested in michigan absolutely do i think michigan need goes down the list enough potentially to pj fleck i don't i think there's going to be more interest in that job than um, potentially anybody would think michigan state i would be very surprised if well here's the other thing i would say a part of it do you know when the last time was a sitting big 10 coach like pj fleck took a different big 10 head coaching job it's very frowned upon it's been since 1972, since the last time that happened. We're talking about 51 years. Now, is Michigan in a tier by themselves above Minnesota? 100%. But I will just believe it when I see it, when it's been 51 years since the last time a Big Ten head coach left for a different Big Ten head coaching job. Let's just see if it happens before we continue to go forward with it. All right, before I let you go, is, is this it for Ben Johnson leading the Minnesota basketball program? Is this the last chance? Oh, that's a great uh, – I mean, they got to show progress. I mean, that's the biggest thing I think athletic director Mark Coyle wants to see is I know they've been bit by the injury bug, but you got to show progress in year three because it has just been absolutely dreadful. And the worst thing that can happen, as you know like I do, is apathy. And if it just becomes a point at some point in February and March where the where the barn is just 40% full, no one's coming to games, that would be the red glaring <laughs> siren that would be going off in my head that he's already got the lowest buyout in the Big Ten, but he's got to show some sort of progress to give fans anything to grasp onto. Because largely outside of football in this town, this is a big basketball market. It's just the Minnesota Timberwolves have been absolutely dreadful for so, so long. Go for basketball has had their moments, but they've been so dreadful here recently. If you give these people in this market any good basketball to hang on to, they'll come, they'll show up, they'll watch. But it's on Ben Johnson and that staff to get this team to be watchable in 2023, 2024. Well, good luck with Josh Dobbs. I'm rooting for you. Yeah, I I wish they would have just blown the thing up because peace and love, whether it's Jaron Hall, Josh Dobbs, Sean Mannion, uh, maybe they can trade for Tommy DeVito after they put him on waivers. I, I just don't know how you continue to – I mean, that's, that's the thing that frustrates me. You have Jordan Addison coming into his own. TJ Hawkinson is good. You got, J, you got Justin Jefferson, who will hopefully be off IR in a couple weeks, and plus Brian Flores and this defense got it going. It's just – Kirk Cousins, the most dependable and healthy quarterback in the modern football era, has that happen. And it's just the football gods in Minneapolis have not been kind. Hated it. Market. Hated it, but stay out of my tank business, okay? Yeah, if you trade us Colson Montgomery, we can talk about it for them White Sox. <laughs> Ryan Burns, you're the goods, man. See you. See you. 
This episode of the Alana Inquirer podcast is presented by Underdog Sports. We see a lot of you are downloading Underdog Sports, using the promo code, and having fun, which we love to see. If you haven't already checked out Underdog Sports, be sure to do so. It's super easy to use. You go on the app, go pick whether favorite players will have a higher or lower stat total than what is listed. For example, Travis Kelsey, he's very popular these days. If his number is set at 50 receiving yards, and you know Taylor Swift is in the house, you may feel confident he's going to go way higher than the number. Do that with two to five different players and you're in business if you go five for five you can 20x your money so sign up today with promo code Illini and get your first deposit doubled up to $100 visit underdogfantasy.com or find them in the app store and don't forget to register with promo code Illini to get your first deposit doubled up to $100 there are a lot of fantasy companies out there but we decided to partner with underdog because it's the easiest place to play fantasy sports it's also the fastest growing fantasy app in the industry you must be 18 or older and present in a state where underdog fantasy operates terms apply concerned with your play call 1-800-522-4700 or visit www.ncpgambling.org